Hi, my name is Jameson Blanford, Technical Marketing Engineer with Cisco Systems. Today we're going to be talking about spectrum analysis and testing out classification accuracy. Since spectrum analysis is really a tool used to diagnose a problem, it is only really as good as its output. If it's a bad tool, people won't use it. Today we're going to be taking a look at Aruba and Cisco's spectrum analysis solution. For the access points, we have Aruba's AP105, we have Cisco's AP3600 series with Cisco Clean Air technology, and the Aruba AP135 access point. We also have two other AP3600s from Cisco and AP135s from Aruba in the hallway across the hall about 25 feet away so that we can look and try to get triangulation of these interfering devices. Now each one of these access points is configured into client serving mode, meaning that it has a 20 megahertz slice of the spectrum to look at, uh, identify interference, and try to classify it with just that slice of the spectrum. Now we're going to see how the Aruba and Cisco solutions deal with detecting Bluetooth interference. Here we have a Bluetooth speaker from Acoustic Research. We're going to go ahead and turn that on, and it's going to be in pairing mode looking for another device. Now let's take a look at the Aruba and Cisco consoles to see what the alerts they generate. If you come over to the Aruba console, you can see that the AP135 in the room with us actually detected a type of interference, but it detected a frequency hopper of cordless bass. Now the AP105 within the room with us also detected the same type of interfere, a cordless bass station. The other two access points, both AP135s across the hall, detected no type of interference whatsoever. Now let's see if we can drill down into any of this information and even get perhaps a location of this cordless base station with an airwave. So we come over to the airwave map and you can see that all three of our AP135s are on the map as well as some interferers that were detected. If we drill down into that frequency hopper cordless phone we do have a record that it was detected in a first seen, last seen time, what channels were affected, but it has nothing about the actual location of that device historically, nor about which access points actually detected it. Now coming over to the Cisco system, you can see that each individual access point detected the Bluetooth discovery, placed it on the map, and correlated it into one event. Now we can drill down into that Bluetooth discovery event and you can see within the MSC, the entire uh, statistics of this interfere, such as affected channels, duty cycle, severity, are logged, as well as the list of access points that actually detect this interfere are logged as well. As you can see, the Cisco solution provided a lot of detailed information about that Bluetooth interfere, whereas the Aruba solution actually misclassified it, placed it on the map, as a cordless base station, it provided very little information for the administrator to track that down, especially since it's a misclassification, whereas the Cisco system was 100% accurate, showing you where it was and that it was a Bluetooth device. Now we're going to see how the Cisco and Aruba solutions deal with an RF jamming attack. So I'm going to go ahead and flip this on, and what this device does is it takes a fixed frequency and swipes across the entire 2.4 band, blocking anything like Bluetooth, cordless phones, and Wi-Fi. Now let's see how each system, the Cisco and Aruba system, take a look at this type of interference. If we go over to the Aruba console, you can see that each access point detects no interference type. No interference of any kind is displayed, and then no alarm is also communicated up to the administrator. Aruba is unaware of this current attack. When we come over to the Cisco system, you can see each individual access point has detected the RF jammer, has a unique signal strength for it, and then the jammer is correlated into one event, and you can see it's blocking channels 1, 6, and 11. You can see the entire area has turned red because the area or the air quality has reduced drastically. As you can see on the Cisco system, it provided a context-sensitive location of that RF jamming attack so the administrator can take care of it. With the Aruba system, it was unable to detect any type of interference, raise no alarms, and the only way the user or the administrator would know about this is if users call and complain. So what have we learned here today? We've shown that Aruba was unable to classify this Bluetooth speaker or the RF jammer 
and although it provided an interference alert for this Bluetooth speaker, it misclassified it as a cordless phone. Now that makes the administrator's job of tracking it down very difficult if he doesn't know what he's looking for. The Cisco solution, on the other hand, properly identified both these interferers, gave a pinpointed location on the map, thus allowing the administrator to remove it from the installation. Now remember, these tools are only as good as their output, and accuracy counts here. If people don't trust the spectrum analyzer, they're not going to use it.